Recording in progress. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and welcome to another episode of the Daily Red for Anfield Index. Yes, it is a day, but no, it's not one from Ireland. So it's Dave Davis filled in for Dave Hendrick today on Tuesday, the 21st of May, where, to be honest, season's finished, but there is a lot of Liverpool news kicking round. So let me run you through the stories. Let me run you through the headlines, the things that involve Liverpool FC players, staff, and all sorts of things. And the only place to really start is, and it's important I do this almost like we're in an episode of The Bill, but it's 12.48 in the afternoon. The England squad, the provisional England squad is being announced today and the leaks are coming out, aren't they? So David Ornstein's gone, Paul Joyce has done a few. And naturally, the question is, how does it relate to Liverpool? Who's in? Who are we waiting to hear about? As Paul Joyce has tweeted, Curtis Jones and Jarrell Kwanzaa are in that provisional 33-man squad. Now, it's important to say that because Gareth Southgate will name a provisional 33 and then trim it down, won't I? I think it's 26 now you can take to the Euros. There will be some cuts. So you can't say he's in the England squad for the Euros, but both those players have made the provisional squad. Also important to say, there's names that have been left out, like the biggest one's probably Rashford, but from a Liverpool point of view, there's no confirmation, as in Harvey Elliott has been left out, not made it, and nothing around Joe Gomez either at all. Now, it's kind of crazy in a way, isn't it? That, I mean, Curtis Jones has been playing for us recently. Obviously, he's had his injury problems, but not managed to get back in the team. But what he's done at under-21s, and he's largely had a great season, so I can understand why he's there in that regard. People will naturally disagree, just because Curtis Jones is one of those divisive figures. Jarrell Kwanzaa, I mean, what a meteoric rise. I mean, Mika Richards talked about bursting onto the scene. This kid played like 12 seconds or something for Bristol Rovers, didn't he, last season? Hearing the inane witterings of Joey Barton talking to water and spoons and all types of things. And now he finishes the season with Liverpool as the first choice centre-half. Whether you want to debate that's up to you, but Jurgen Klopp confirmed that he picked him over Canate based on what he offered for the last few games. And he's in the provisional England squad. I mean, what a meteoric rise for the kid. The other thing you, you're wondering as well, I mean, Joe Gomez, he's a London boy, isn't he? He'll be desperate to, to make it in for obvious reasons. And, it, you know, he got back into the England scene. So there'll be a little bit of a surprise there, especially with the lack of left-back options and the positions Joe Gomez can play. And Harvey, you'd feel a bit sorry for him, wouldn't you? Because he's had such a great end to the season. Maybe Harvey Elliott's most unfortunate measure is the position he plays. If you think of him almost as an attacking midfielder, You've got to be honest that I know it might always be the natural positions. They play different ones, etc. But just as a pure attacking midfielder, you could argue he's up against Eze, Foden, Bellingham. There's probably more that I'm missing out. But it's just unfortunate, maybe, the position. So, fingers crossed, they could still make that provisional squad. We still got to hear on that yet. But that is where we are at just before one o'clock as it stands. Other big news in our players. Interesting. Mo Salah, a tweet and the Olympics. Never thought I'd say those two together, but two separate things. Mo Salah did tweet late, sort of yesterday afternoon, early evening, around how, you know, he'll fight for everything. You know, we want to give it to the fans next season. Now, everyone's naturally taken that as confirmation that Mo's staying. People are now talking, aren't they, around there? Well, hold on. Once if an offer comes in and all this, but... It's important to mention because a lot of people are taking it that way as confirmation, it's up to you, that Mo Salah will stay at Liverpool next season. The other thing to mention, the stories that a couple of hours ago were coming, that the expectation is the Egyptian Olympic team will speak to Liverpool about calling Mo Salah up for the Olympics. Again, been a lot of talk around that, hasn't there? But we'll have to see what happens. But a couple of noteworthy things around Mo Salah. Oh, that's a, it's sad still saying this, and in a good way, because there's sadness that, that it's gone, but there's quite a few Jurgen Klopp-related interviews still coming out. So Harvey Elliott did one that's been released today for LFC TV. 
Now that is around how Jurgen Klopp, it's a great interview to be fair, it's worth reading if you haven't at all, made him a man, how he developed his game, how passionate he is. And you could almost, I know it's reading it, but it's on LFC TV, hear the sadness in those words. So yeah, definitely. And it's not going to be the only Jurgen Klopp material. It's going to be consistent and understandably as it should be. Almost feels like a week in mourning, doesn't it, in a way? But yeah, a good one to sort of call out there. The Arnie Schlott material carries on as well. So is there a few to call out there? The Daily Telegraph's got a few worth mentioning. So Oliver Brown's doing a, almost a series on Arnie Schlott from people who he knows, you know, has spoken to, people who are to helping to talk about Arnie Schlott. So there's a few out today. I'm expecting almost more. It does feel like it's a series piece, but that's the Telegraph. So there's two there from Oliver Brown to mention. The other one that really caught my eye, and I've had a good read of this, and I would recommend you do the same if you can, if you're into this type of thing. Rafa Benitez has given an interview to The Telegraph from Rafa Benitez's web, you know, his website, I'm sure many subscribe or read that, around what Arne Schlott should do and expect in the Liverpool role, almost like a, a top tip, you could call it, so to speak. It's a really good article where it talks about how we should connect with the fans be his genuine, authentic self, you know, the type of football he should play. They're not ready. I don't want to give spoilers from the article because I don't want to ruin it for you if it is your type of thing. But big recommendation from me there. Have a read of it. And even the Oliver Brown ones, it's a really sort of good series, I would say, as well. Speaking of really good series that it's worth sort of reading, it's fair credit to them. Red Men TV, they're releasing bits. I know we on Alpha the Index have sort of put bits out of those interviews but with Jurgen Klopp's staff isn't there so they had Pep Linders I'm probably pronounced this wrong but Peter Crowver it's Victor Matos as well so they've almost been releasing those sequentially I mean some great insights well, and people have got their opinions on Pep Linders there is zero doubt about that people have very very strong opinions on Pep Linders some do but it's actually interesting the interview when it talks about his passion what he said to Jurgen recounting key moments throughout his time and Jürgen's reign. Really would recommend having a, whether it's watch, having a read of those, but really a, an unbelievable job there by the Redmond TV. So it is worth calling out and to keep abreast of those types of things. Other things to sort of signpost, if you're a fan, if you like voting for things, the Premier League team of the season, you can now vote for your players that you want to be named in there. So it is a fan-based or based vote. Interested names, maybe surprise you, maybe not. The six, one more than five, one less than seven, Liverpool players nominate, or you, you can nominate to go into that team of the season in the final vote. So the players are, there's Virgil, Mo, Darwin, Trent, Maka, and Alisson. So those are the six players. Whether they make your Premier League team of the season, I'm not, I'd be astonished if someone puts all six in there, but if you are a diehard red, fair play. But yeah, if you do like voting, do like casting your, your opinion, this type of thing, that is available on the Premier League website. Importantly, content-wise as well, there's quite a few things coming out, but it's definitely worth calling out. The Up Boys have released their pod, so it's the sort of final one around this season. I know there's a season review coming from them, but... As always with Up, definitely worth a listen if you haven't already. Me and Trev did the transfer show last night, so that is out there for you. All the latest updates around incomings, outgoings, rumours around Liverpool, the wider Premier League and Europe at the same time as well. I know there's quite a, a few things coming pod-wise as well, so keep your eyes out for them. And it, it is important that I, I do say that because it, people might think, oh, you're winding down in any way with the season finished. Christ on a bike, it's the opposite. Transfers ratcheting up, aren't they? Liverpool have got a whole, whole support staff to, to find as well. I know Slot will bring some people with him, but there'll be things around that. There's a million things going to go on this summer with Liverpool. And that's before you get back for pre-season training, which is where I wanted to get to because quite a few announced it sort of late yesterday that Arnie Schlott has requested that pre-season is brought forward a week. So back to the 1st of July, he's asking Liverpool players to report back for duty. Now, naturally, people will be on internationals. There's the Euros. There's the Copper America. 
there's all those types of things. There's a little bit of an uncertainty about how it affects certain players, shall we say. But that is the story that a lot are going with. Arnie Schlott wants players back from the 1st of July. Whether that's the full squad, I'm sure there'll be further details, but that is the headline there. And transfers-wise, it's starting to ratchet up and going forward. We'll be doing regulars for you just to, to let you know around what's going on, the incomings, outgoings, the rumours, all those types of things that, that we possibly can. A couple of big players to, to call out. I'm sure many of you have seen this. Johan Bakayoko. So that's the left-footed right winger for PSV, who've obviously won the Eredivisie. And before people start screaming Eredivisie attacks, which I understand, there's quite a few links. And again, I'm probably going to butcher names here. But Sasha Tavlieri, for people who remember the Romeo Lavia saga, another Belgium youngster last summer. So he started tweeting about it that he's on Liverpool's list that we've watched back of Yoko. And there's quite a few, and it's backed up by a Dutch journalist. Again, I'm probably going to butcher this. So apologies, Patrick, and all our Dutch listeners. Rick Elfrink, I think it's pronounced, a well respected Dutch journalist, has said that Liverpool scouts were at the game recently, weren't they? The, the PSV versus 21 to watch Johan Bakayoko. An interesting prospect, you could argue, 21, expected to go to the Euros with Belgium. 14 goals, 14 assists. Yes, in all competitions. Yes, in the Eredivisie before people shout. But there's always it's, an, it's not a new name, it's important to say, is it? It's a player that's been linked with Liverpool for a while. It would be zero surprise at the same time if he is on Liverpool's list, shall we say, our much fabled list. But we know how it works. We know how we approach transfers. As the up boys have told us, we know how it can come down to sort of finite details, the video analysis, once we streamline, as it were, all types of things like that. So it is important to call out at the same time. Other transfer news, it's worth mentioning that... The only real notable name, and it is a, a well-known journalist, Matt Law in the Daily Telegraph, did say that Liverpool are interested in Jacob Ramsey. So that's the Aston Villa. You say midfielder, attacking midfielder, isn't it? Now, he's a player that's been linked away with Villa for some time. The reason for that being, and people will talk about, hold on, Villa in the Champions League, they want to build their squad. Yes, they absolutely do. However, FFP, PSR, however you wish to phrase it, might well be an issue for them. So that's been something that's been speculated for some time. So we'll have to see. I'm not sure people are reading that too seriously. He's been linked with Newcastle. They've also had Diogo Carlos, their centre-half, linked away. But it is worth mentioning. The other thing that is worth calling out, it's on the official website, and it, it depends what type of thing you like, but I'm always a fan of this. If you're a fan of specific artwork, stylings, and it is part of Liverpool fan culture, isn't it? The mosaics, all those types of things. Liverpool are currently tweeting a lot of special images around the trophies that Jurgen Klopp has won during his time at Anfield. So some brilliant ones in regards to, you know, almost graphic illustrations of the, the Super Club, the Champions League. So almost, I'd say, the memorable images from that time or from his, his various good times. I shouldn't minimise it that way, should I at all? So if it is your thing, definitely, definitely one to have a look at through there as well. And I should really mention it. I know people will have their opinions or be decrying this, but the headline as well, it's a former Liverpool player, but that Jordan Henderson is not in the provisional England squad as well. I will let you make what you make of that. But there's a lot going on LFC-wise, isn't there? We'll wait for more details. We'll keep our fingers crossed for Harvey. We'll keep our fingers crossed for Joe Gomez. At the same time, I understand a little bit like you. I'm thinking I would rather they just had the summer off. That is my honest thoughts. But we know these players love England. There's no point in pretending they want to play. So... If they do, we've got to take that in mind. But yeah, just to recap, quite a few podcasts released this morning as well. The Up Boys did the Wolves game and the Clock Goodbye, the transfer show, and there's bound to be more and more coming throughout the week. And speaking of through the week, probably a good way to finish, 
season reviews are coming up. So keep an eye out for a number of those in terms of the articles we'll be doing, the pods we'll be doing, because there's a lot to reflect back on over a hectic and chaotic season. And there you go, ladies and gents. I'm not Irish, and I don't mean it's a derogatory way. I probably don't get as angry about certain things. But that was Dave from Anfield Index, and that was your Daily Red podcast.